I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. Hi everybody, welcome back to Pats and Power Socks. It's D, and it is Sunday, February the 16th, and I hope you all had a great week and a happy Valentine's Day. Um, I am talking about AIS or Adenocarcinoma in situ today. And I had actually originally filmed this video earlier in the week um, and not Sunday night at, oh, I don't know, 10 o'clock. Um, but I was editing it and getting it ready to put out there and it was so bad. It was so boring. Um, I really, I couldn't even stand it. So I don't assume that nobody else would be able to stand it. So here I am on Sunday night, um, sitting on the couch, hanging out with my cat Max. Kids are in bed and uh, figured I'd try refilming it now. So um, stick around, we're gonna talk about AIS and what that is and um, my initial diagnosis with AIS and uh, why I am so passionate about helping women who are diagnosed with AIS get some support. So stick around. Okay, so what is AIS? Well, in the world of cervical health, AIS is adenocarcinoma in situ. And adenocarcinoma is a type of cancer cell. And it's one of the two most common types of cervical cancer. The second is squamous cell um, carcinoma. Um, and basically, when you think of, of cervical cancer, you start out having um, cellular changes happen and it starts out kind of gradually and you'll have like, if you think of having like 10 cells, um, maybe one or two will change gradually and then three or four and then four or five, five or six until most of the cells have changed. Um, and then as those cells change, they have the risk of becoming cancer cells. Um, and so originally um, I had had high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, um, which is like a, the first kind of type of dysplasia, like a precancerous cell. Um, but mine originally eventually turned into adenocarcinoma. And so um, adenocarcinoma is particularly tricky because it can form what's called skip lesions. And that's basically where um, rather than forming just one single kind of tumor, it can kind of like leave little, or kind of go to other little spots in the uterus or cervix, um, lymph nodes, and um, and can cause cancer there. So it's kind of a tricky one. Um, and I think my understanding is that squamous cell does not do that as much or to the same extent that the adenocarcinoma does. Um, so adenocarcinoma is a little bit trickier, um, but you can have adenocarcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, you can have a mixture of both of them. Um, and there's actually um, a type of cervical cancer that is very similar to um, lung cancer, um, so which is kind of interesting. Um, most, 99% of cervical cancers are caused by the HPV, uh, vex, or sorry, the HPV virus, so human papillomavirus, um, and that triggers all of these cellular changes to happen in the cervix and to eventually form, form adenocarcinoma or squamous cell carcinoma. Um, so AIS for me was an initial diagnosis. And what that means is that um, I had a biopsy done and they, um, at, at my colposcopy checkup, and they found AIS. Now, when I went for that colposcopy checkup, what colposcopy is, is they basically, it's like a more invasive pap. So colposcopy, um, it's like going for a pap, you put your legs up in the stirrups and um, hopefully you're wearing your power socks. And you have your legs up in the stirrups and um, they put in a speculum, but they also take a really good look with a camera. So they have a, like a big, excuse me, kind of microscope camera that they kind of look around with and um, they paint the cervix with like a, a solution, like kind of like an iodine solution. It's kind of a mustardy color solution. Um, and that kind of makes the cells glow that might be abnormal. Um, so they paint the cervix and um, 
if anything shows up, then they'll biopsy that. I hadn't had a biopsy done for a couple of years, so I asked my doctor to biopsy my cervix at this appointment because I was worried. I kind of said to my doctor, I said, how do you know um, that there isn't anything going on if I haven't had a biopsy in five years since I had originally gone for my first colposcopy? Um, so she agreed. Uh, to do a biopsy. I was also having some very, very mild symptoms um, that might indicate dysplasia. So I had um, a little bit of pain and, and bleeding with intercourse. So, um, and not, not a lot, just like if you were to wipe after, you might notice something. Um, and that's kind of what I had going on. So I was concerned because I knew it was an, um, that's an early sign of dysplasia. Um, so I asked for a biopsy. So it's a really good note that if you ha are having concerns, you should ask your doctor and self-advocate for yourself. Um, doctors can only do so much with the information that they're given and we have to give them that information. I'm um, sorry, my cat Max is down here snuggling with me. So he's, he's my little snuggle bug on the couch here. Um, so yeah, so I advocated for myself. Um, I felt like something was wrong. I asked my doctor to take a, a better look and the biopsy was the best way to get a better look and, and she agreed. Um, and that's when it, it, my colposcopy biopsy came back as having AIS. So um, they did give me that information over the phone as well. So um, I got a call a couple weeks after my colposcopy cl clinic visit um, that I had uh, my, my biopsy had come back as having AIS. Um, and that was kind of interesting because AIS, I mean, if you, if you know much ab about, you know, cells and cell types, adenocarcinoma sounds bad. Anything that has that carcinoma, um, it, it means cancerous, right? So you immediately, I immediately at least started to freak out when I got that diagnosis. Um, and I think that's really normal. It's really hard to find a lot of information about AIS. Um, the American Association, Cancer Association, um, does classify AIS as, um, stage zero cervical cancer. So, um, it can either be considered a precancer or a stage zero cervical cancer. Um, if it's a precancer, it's basically the highest level of precancer before they consider it cancer. Um, but I, in most places they do consider it, like I said, stage zero of cer cervical cancer. Now, uh, in my case, I was diagnosed as AIS um, because they still had more tests to do to, to figure out what was going on. Adenocarcinoma in, in situ, it's called in situ because it means just sitting on the surface. Um, so if you think of the cervix as like a tight donut, when they do say just your normal pap smear, they take a cutibar swab and they, they just swab around the surface of the cervix. So they're just getting a very um, a surface level sampling of the cells. If they do a biopsy, so like what happened in my case, they'll take like a little pinch of the tissue um, where there might be a lesion um, to get a sampling of the cells. And um, that's still a really, really minor amount. They can't tell if that's like a, like a kind of like a skin cancer, so to speak, like where it's like just sitting on the surface and it's not going deeper, um, in which case um, the chances of removing it successfully are higher. Um, or if it does go deeper, if it's invasive, so they have to do more diagnostics. So they'll say it's AIS before they know if it's anything else, which is what they did in my case. So a lot of women, um, from what I was reading on social media sites and support groups, they'll get diagnosed as AIS and they don't really know where to go. They don't know where to fit in the support system. Um, if you're looking at um, cervical cancer groups, um, these are women who have been diagnosed as having cancer and they're going through very different things um, and having very different things happening to them. Um, if you are diagnosed as AIS, you're still at the really beginning of that journey. Hopefully you don't have to go further than, um, you know, a, a simple not that it's simple, but a, a trachelectomy or or a, hist a simple hyster total, total hysterectomy. Um, whereas 
getting further into the diagnosis of invasive cancer means that you're going to have either a radical hysterectomy at the very least um, or radical hysterectomy, chemo, radiation, brachytherapy, that sort of thing. Um, so there's really a dividing line there, but it's still just as scary for those women who are being diagnosed initially as AIS because they don't know where that journey is going to go. They may very well end up being told they have invasive cancer, which was what happened in my case. Um, so, or they may end up just having, not just, but having a final diagnosis that is AIS. Um, now the interesting thing about AIS is that because these adenocarcinoma in situ, because adenocarcinoma cells like to form these skip lesions, the recommended therapy for that is either a trachelectomy, so just removing the cervix, um, or a simple hysterectomy. So it's still pretty major and will have really major consequences on these women's lives. Um, so I think it's really important not to minimize what they're going through. Um, I saw a lot of that on social media, actually. It was kind of frustrating. It was very frustrating for me when I was trying to find information. Um, and I know it's got to be frustrating for other women who are being told they have AIS because you don't really fit in the support for women who have been diagnosed of having an invasive cancer. It's hard to find information and support um, in the pre-cancer groups because it's a little bit, it's obviously more serious than just having, you know, um, like SIN1 cellular changes. Um, and it still means a huge life change and, and big impacts for these women. So that's why I'm a big advocate for getting information out about AIS because I really found that I struggled in that area. Um, once I was diagnosed with AIS, once I was told that diagnosis over the phone, uh, they set up um, immediately a LEAP procedure. So the next step after your, they find AI um, adenocarcinoma um, is to, again, do more diagnostics. So is it invasive um, or is it just sitting on the skin? And that's kind of what they want to determine at that point. Um, so usually it's either a LEAP procedure or a colonization. And each of those... The goal in those is the same. It's to take a bigger sample. So again, if you think of the cervix as like a donut, um, they take a, a big chunk of kind of the center portion of the cervix in this shape of a cone. So if you think of this as the, the part that would be the outer surface of that donut and then goes into the interior. So they get a good sampling of it. They take out a big chunk of the cervix so they can see how deep those cancer cells go to see if they're invasive. And what they're looking for at that point is they're looking to see if the edges of that sample have what's called clean margins. So um, is it clear, like is there any cancer cells that get to the edge of that sample or not? Um, and I'll talk about that in, in another post. But when we're thinking about um, adenocarcinoma, whether it's invasive or not changes your treatment um, outcome. So if it's invasive, then again, like I said, you be considered a higher like a, an invasive cancer um, so then you're going into radical hysterectomy brachytherapy chemo radiation that sort of thing um, and if it's not invasive then the recommendation is a simple hysterectomy or a trachelectomy if you're there is options to still preserve fertility so if you're young um, and you are hoping to have kids then you can talk to your team about um, the options of a trachelectomy and that's where they um, remove the cervix but they can attach the uterus to the vagina still so there's there's still options um, at that point for you so that's good um, and it, I think it's really important when you're talking about women's cancers um, to make sure you discuss fertility with your doctor um, I was lucky enough that our hand wasn't forced we had already decided as a family that we were finished having children. Um, so uh, we, we knew that regardless of what the outcome was, um, that a hysterectomy would be um, the best option for me. So at least that was taken, that was a, a decision we didn't have to have to wrestle with. And I know there's lots of women out there that do. Um, yeah, so that's AIS and kind of what the deal was, is with that. Um, uh, I 
hope you join me on Wednesday for Wellness Wednesday. And thanks for this late night video. Cheers. Bye. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I will not feel bad today. I'll be happy if I want to. I will be the sun.